It has been a minute, you guys, but I am finally reviewing Writing Deep Scenes. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another writing craft book review. In today's video, I will be discussing Writing Deep Scenes by Martha Alderson and Jordan Rosenfeld. Now this was the Let's Talk Craft Book Club book choice of July and I usually don't wait this long to review, but I... I don't insert excuses here okay but if you want to see a full two-hour discussion of this book with other writers um both on screen and in the comments then that video will be linked down in the description as well as information for the September choice um which is the last choice for 2020 of the Let's Talk Craft book club which if you don't already know is a book club for writers where we read one craft book it was this year a month um next year it's going to be every two Two months just to give people more time to get books from the library and to read them or other things that you know were preventing people from being able to finish in one month so anyway this was the july book club choice you can see that discussion as i said but i'm going to now give you my review of this book i like to make the reviews after i have had the discussion because i like to think about what other people have said things that maybe they point out and I like to have some time to let the book marinate. So now that it's marinated for a long time, I'm going to get into my review. Okay, so the full title of this book is Writing Deep Scenes, Plotting Your Story Through Action, Emotion, and Theme. And Sorry, it's a long one, <laughs> but basically I really think that's important because that is how the book really focuses on things. It focuses on focuses on the scene level rather than holistically looking at writing and it really focuses and breaks down the um, chapters into action, emotion, and theme. So that's really how the book is constructed and it's really focusing on very much an individual scene level. It also breaks um, stories into four major parts, which I think is really helpful, um, if we're, especially if you're thinking of Save the Cat, kind of, you know, act one, act two, act three. She further breaks that down um, into having act two be uh, two parts. So she doesn't say acts and said she has these four part. So she has the beginning, the emerging middle, the deep middle, and then the end scenes. But if you apply those thinking about the acts and the beginning being act one, the emerging middle and the deep middle being act two, and the end scenes being act three, then you can kind of apply them and it works like that. Okay, so first what I like to do is always talk about the positives. And so let's start with the pros. First of all, I like the way she breaks that down, um, especially because act two is such a chunker relatable um and so uh to break it down into two different parts i think is really sort of helpful to conceptualize what should be happening um, at the beginning or what she calls the emerging middle and then what should be happening at the deeper middle. Now this was groundbreaking for me because i was really struggling with my chunky middle so in more ways than one and um breaking it down and the way she breaks those two down was so so helpful for me because in those four parts she also talks about energetic markers so there are four energetic markers that should be happening at the end of each of those sections and she really defines what those energetic markers are and what should be happening at the end of each one of those so at the end of the beginning you have your first energetic marker which should be the point of no return where things are different and you're emerging into a new world and there's no going back at this point point. and then now I'm gonna read this part just so I don't get it wrong because this was really key and what I think is one of the best parts of her explanation and this is when she talks about the emerging middle so she says that the emerging middle now remember this is the first half of act two is when a band of antagonists control this section so it ends with that second energetic marker and that is a rededication and then in the rededication the protagonist recommits to their goal so the discussion of the second energetic marker was literally like game changing for me because I wasn't doing it right. I wasn't doing that and that's exactly like what I knew was wrong but didn't know was wrong. Like I knew there was something wrong with that section and I couldn't like pinpoint it or know how to fix it or even like identify what was wrong. It just felt wrong and then reading her section literally was a light bulb for me on why it wasn't working what was wrong she really does a breakdown of that second energetic marker and it's supposed to be like where the midpoint turn is but 
she really explains this much I shouldn't say she because it's her and Jordan um I'm gonna Sorry if I did that before. I'm gonna say they. I gotta remember that there's two others. Most of the books I read only have one. So they really explain that ener second energetic marker and they break it down to let you know what should be happening at that like midpoint turn. And when I read that, I realized that my midpoint turn is not a midpoint turn. What I had as the midpoint turn should actually have been the third energetic marker, which I'll get to in a second. Um, and then what should be my second energetic marker was actually something that was happening in the fun and games so I had to like move everything down and then she explains that what happens after the second energetic marker should be an even more exotic world than the first um part so basically she's saying that you have your emerging middle where it's like an exotic world and then the deeper middle is an even more exotic world and she explains this um she has several examples there's a lot of examples which i'll also talk about later but one of them that she uses is the fault in our stars and that was so so helpful for me first of all because most uh writing craft books do not choose like ya contemporaries which is what i'm writing and so seeing it apply to a ya contemporary was like game changing for me but also because it was a really familiar like story and I could visually see it because of the movie as well. And so I, it was a great, great example, but just like that explanation completely fundamentally unlocked so many things for me for my story. So if for nothing else, that section to me makes us chef's kiss book okay because I know 100% that it has affixed my chunky swampy metal. So now, getting back to those energetic markers, she does also talk about the third energetic marker, which is where you have darker actions and darker emotions are happening as you move toward that third energetic marker, which is the Dark Knight, similar to the Dark Knight of the Soul or whatever you want to call it. And then she has her end scene, which is the triumph or reaching the goal. Now, in talking about all four of these sections, she does break them down into... Um, what you should be focusing on in the action, what you should be focusing on in the emotion, and what you should be focusing on in terms of theme for all of those sections. So I just want to say the discussion of those four parts and specifically the energetic markers and what should be happening, what should lead up to them, and then what should happen at those energetic markers was a huge, huge pro of this book. Another uh, pro of the book is it really, um, the authors break down all types of scenes like every book has these types of scenes breaks them down into individual um different types of scene names them and basically explains where in books they should happen so it's like oh you have this type of scene it should happen in these this area of the novel in the you know this section or this section and they should usually have these kinds of things i definitely plan to utilize that in my plotting um for my rewrite of my current book and just really making sure that my scenes are appropriate for the area that they're in and that they're kind of hitting things that should be happening in those types of scenes because I really think that the way that the authors explain it being able to identify the type of scene is going to help you really fully develop what should be happening in that scene if that makes sense and they also really just kind of break down a scene what should happen in a scene and explaining how um they are like little mini stories and what elements should be included in every scene and i found that to be extremely helpful as well just kind of conceptualizing okay what makes a scene what do i need to make sure is in every scene in order for it to constitute as a scene there's also a lot of great um advice on cause and effect and how each of your scenes should cause something to happen and the effect is the next scene and having that linking between them which is something i know my own story was really lacking and also gives a lot of tips on um, tension and how to build tension in your book which i thought was also really helpful and another thing i found really helpful was that the authors explain that you know we always hear this about like a character flaw they really explain it more as a misbelief and that that misbelief and basically how to achieve their goal is the flaw that they have. So rather than being like, oh, their flaw is they interrupt people when they speak, they're really emphasizing more like that the flaw should be a misbelief that your character has, which prevents them from reaching the goal and 
the way that they need to and just phrasing it like that and explaining it like that makes much more sense to me because I was like I don't want to like I mean no one likes perfect characters but when they have this misbelief that's going to make them be flawed I didn't want to like randomly just make her like do something weird just to have a flaw if that makes sense so this makes it much more purposeful and then the last big pro of this um, book is the entire chapter on theme theme is the most elusive aspect of writing and I really think that the authors do a really good job of breaking it down explaining it and how you can implement it in all kinds of writing not just literary writing they discuss what it is how to develop it how to portray it they discuss symbols imagery all of that stuff it is so so helpful because I think a lot of times if we're writing what is considered more like commercial or genre fiction we don't consider these elements and or we don't know how and we only kind of know the classic way we learned in like school or something and I feel like they really explain it in a helpful way to help me think about this for my own book. Now let's get into the cons because there are some cons you guys. Uh, the organization I hated. I hated that they broke everything down into the action, emotion, and um, theme because I, it felt a little repetitive because they would go action and then they'd say first section, second section, third section, fourth section, and they'd go back. Now with emotion, first section. I wish they would have broken the book up into the sections of the book. So like in the beginning, here's the action, emotion, theme. In the, you know, I, I understand why they kind of did it that way, but it just started to come off a little repetitive to me and I just wish they just hadn't. It didn't work for me anyway. There also were a lot, a lot of examples like a lot of examples and because of that there was a lot of summary because they're talking about specific scenes there was a lot of time spent in the book setting you up to understand that scene so it was a lot of summary of books and so what I did was just skim them and only look at the examples of um, pretty much books that I either have read or knew the basic premise of so that I didn't need to read all of that summary because it just felt like a lot um, after a little bit of doing it. There was also some language that was academic in tone, but I don't necessarily, I guess, isn't a con, but could make it a little less accessible um, to people who aren't familiar with that academic language. But I don't think it was too bad. It was not like John Truby level, I feel like, in terms of that kind of academic tone. But that could be a con for some people, so I just kind of want to bring that up. Like, I didn't mind it per se, but I could see how it would make some concepts perhaps a little inaccessible. But I wouldn't say that it's a lot or bad or that you should avoid it it's just maybe makes it I guess just a little less accessible or a little less like I don't know it's just academic y in tone you know and there was some stuff in there that was kind of obvious or had been covered by other craft books that people have probably already read especially like Save the Cat but at the same time it does add new stuff to those sections and so like yeah some of the scene stuff from the breakdowns of scenes like yeah of course that's a type of scene or of course that type of scene would happen at the beginning but some of it was new ones so there is a little bit that you probably already know but I do think that there's a lot that is added to what you may already know that will enhance what you already know if that makes sense. So while I don't think this was like super jaw dropping like hold the phone drop everything read this immediately honestly what it did for me so fundamentally has changed how I'm looking at my book and how I'm gonna write my book moving forward that I think it's a game changer I think it's worth it I think it's like for me it was top notch it like unlocked something for me and really just took a couple of concepts that I was really struggling with and really helped because I feel like there is some aspects of that like second act that is really hard for people and that I think that talking about it in terms of scenes on the scene level is really and those energetic markers I think is really game changing for understanding the function of the act two. So even though not every single thing was new and useful what was new or useful I think is worth the book. 
So who would I recommend this to? Not a novice writer, that is for sure. I think you would need to read at least one other seminal text, like say The Cat Writes a Novel, or maybe even like Story Genius before you tackle this book because it does kind of um, enhance those concepts that have already been established by other craft books. And it's really doing a deeper dive on the scene level and it's not giving overall writing advice. And I definitely think that this lends itself better to plotters um, but I actually think this book could help um, pantsers as well. It doesn't really push any of those agendas out there in any of it. It's really just talking about writing at the scene level and it probably would maybe even be, I think that this would be best applied when plotting a book or then when you're revising, um, I think in those two elements. So I wouldn't say that this is maybe necessarily super helpful if you're drafting as a plotter, I mean as a pantser, but if you're a plotter it would help with drafting like before you get there and then also in revisions I think it would help. Now do I recommend overall you should get this book? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, this book definitely, definitely is worthy of the Laura Wright's seal of approval recommended writing craft book. It really, really just gave me such light bulb door opening uh, moments for my own book that I would be remiss if I didn't recommend it to everybody. Now, if you are thinking about checking out this book, I do have it linked down in the description. I have a link to um, a version for the US as well as Canada. You can also find the books that I fundamentally recommend down in the description as well. And like I said, all of the book club information and the live stream is down below as well. Overall, you guys, highly 10 out of 10, recommend this book. Check it out. I think it'll help you on the scene level. I think it'll help you with that swampy, chunky middle. And uh, yeah, I hope it really helps change the game for you the way it did for me. So hopefully you found this review helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so it tells YouTube that you find this stuff useful. And if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please be sure to hit the subscribe button because I do writing craft reviews as well as host the writing craft book club as well as chronicle my journey to trying to complete a freaking book you know so thank you guys as always for watching and i will see you in the next one bye